In this video, we're going to focus on how we can customize the Y scale in a different structure where we have these incremental steps here. We want to make sure that the scale here will be always, or at least the numbers here will be shown, but the last one will not be shown. So the bar will always stick out on the numbers here. So let's start to look how we can do that. So let's start to look how to remove the top tick label in ChartJS. And this was a question I get specifically in the email. So let's start to work on this. So how do I do this? First of all, make sure we go and uh, go to chartjs3.com, getting started this specific link, which you can find as well on in the description box. So once you're on here, get the boiler template. We're going to grab this boiler template here, copy all of this. If you want to understand what this does, make sure you watch this video here. So then I'm going to paste it in here. So we'll cut out the title and put that title in here say refresh there we are let's maximize the size by saying 80 percent here save on the chart box with there we are now what i want to do is i want to control this specific item i want to have a specific step size of increment of five at a time so i'm going to the y scale and then what i'm going to do here is a comma and then i'm going to say here the ticks and within the ticks what i'm going to put in is what we call the step size of five pixels oh sorry not five pixels but increment of five so if i save this refresh you can see here we have an increment of five but what we want to do was to make sure that this value is not being displayed but the question was also on how we remove the tick marks along with that so what we're going to do here is the following i'm going to say enter say here grid and we're going to first remove the tick marks so to do that, we're going to say draw ticks equals false. And this here is not related to the ticks, but it's the tick mark itself, those lines that are connected to the grid. So that's why we have it in the grid. So if I save that, refresh, as you can see here what is happening, the scale gets closer to the labels. So what I want to do is to have a little, a little bit of space here. So to do this in the ticks, I'm going to say a comma, and then I'm going to say here a padding, because I want to add a padding, but the padding will be added to left and right. So that will be a 10 pixels. So if I save this, refresh, so you can see there's space here being added and space there. So that's the only thing here. And then maybe we could say here, um, if I'm not mistaken, get a font size, font, and I'm going to say here size, uh, 15 pixels. So if I save this, refresh, you can see we have now increased 15 pixels, so make sure it's in the font, and then within the font object, we specify the size. And I think we can even do here the weight, and we can just say here, in a string value, bold. Save that, there we are. <clears throat> Final item is, how do we remove this one? So what we're gonna do here in the ticks, we're gonna put in your comma, and we're gonna create a callback functionality. And this callback will consist of a few variables or uh, values or arguments, which is the value, the index, and the values. All three of them are going to become important. So to make sure you understand all three of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you them, show you what they have or what they consist of. So I guess the index should be already self-explanatory. And finally, we have here the values. So if I save this right now, if I refresh, you can see here, it will not return anything here because we didn't put a return here. So that's why there's no labels yet or tick labels. So don't worry about that. However, if you open up the developer tool tab, you can see here we get a few items. You get here, uh, well, let me just refresh this. There we are, you get all of this. You can see you get the value of 20, number four, which is the index, this is the value. The value of 20 was the very top here. And finally, we get this here, and if we're going to break this down, all right, interesting enough, we cannot read them like this because it's being loaded. So what I want to do here, just remove all of this, save, refresh, open up this. All right, interesting. We're not able to get this right away. However, it has recognized certain values here. And uh, basically what this really recognizes is the values of all the ticks that we have and this is important and it's a pity that i'm not able to show you this 
But the reason why there's five here, because there will be five lines. So if I'm going to say maybe you can say your return, and just say your value. Let's remove that, say refresh. See if this will give us all right. Now you can see it gives us the response that I was hoping for. So we have five items here, basically it's an array. And the reason why there's five items, length of five, but index zero all the way to index four. Zero, and this is index one, index two, index three, and index four. So what we can do is basically figure out what is the last index value. And from that point on, we can say we want to remove that as an if statement. So what I'm going to do here is the following. Uh, what we're going to do here is a simple if statement, but this if statement will say if the index would be, and maybe what we can do as well is to create a formula. So we say here value dot length, that will give us five. So we need an index of a four, so minus one. So let's say here constant will be total uh, index or something like that. Uh, this is not really proper English, I guess total index or total items that's probably more better and all we're going to do now is an if statement and this if statement will just check one thing how many if the index will be equal or sorry is not equal to the total item so should it not be equal to number four in that case keep on going and give us a return value if and else it just doesn't do anything very straightforward here semicolon save this refresh and now you can see here, it continues on and will then recognize the last value here. We could change this, but if I say step size instead of five, I'll make this two. And if I save this, refresh, there we are. And then I know there was still the question was, we want to make sure that the scale is still higher compared to the bar, all right? If you want to do that, what we can do here is what we call grace. So I'm going to say enter, put in here grace, and say we want to have additional one segment. So if I save this, refresh, as you can see here, we have an additional one segment, and one segment is basically a step size. That's from this point to this, that's two additional, so the top is now 20. And that's basically how we can control the scale here nicely. So if you enjoyed this video, and maybe you want to play around even more with the scale, for example, you want to have number format because you're working with currencies and you have different formats, for currencies in that case i'm going to recommend you this video here which is very interesting which is how to format numbers in the y scale in charts showing you in different currency formats so you have all these different options in charts as well